It's more than 20 years since Hungary joined NATO and 16 since it became a member of the European Union. Prime Minister Viktor Orban is now in his fourth term of office, the last three of which have been consecutive. And during that time, his government has been in dispute with its neighbours over human rights, democracy and refugees. I'm Andrew Hopkins and I've been talking about some of those issues with the Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Siarto, one-on-one. -on -one. Peter Siarto, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. Now, in the past, Hungary has been a keen supporter of Turkey joining the European Union. Is that still the case and why does Hungary feel that way? Well, actually, Turkey is a big country, a strong country uh, with a strong economy. With, um, uh, with a huge importance from the perspective of uh, the future, of, um, of the strength um, and the success of the entire European uh, continent within the European and, and within the continent the European Union. Uh, of course, we were always in favor of a straightforward and open dialogue with Turkey. Um, when it comes to EU membership, we have to be aware of one thing. Uh, in order any country to become member of the European Union, there need to be a unanimous decision, meaning that all 27 member states do have to agree. Now, when we are together, foreign ministers and the representative of Turkey is not in the room, um, a number of member states um, make it very clear that they will not support and they definitely not support Turkey's membership in the European Union. Given the fact that uh, there need to be a unanimous decision, we all know what it means. But the same countries, unfortunately, do not really say it when the representative of Turkey uh, is uh, in the room. So that's why I think that we should have an open, fair and honest dialogue here. And if there are countries which do not want Turkey to become a, the member of the European Union, then we have to speak about um, another type of uh, cooperation. Well, what we definitely um, do know is that uh, um, this future success of the European Union will be pretty much influenced by how EU-Turkey cooperation will play out on the field of uh, economy and in the field of, uh, of security as well. That's why we are in favor of a strategic and tight and effective cooperation between uh, Turkey and the European Union, format of which should be discussed in the future. So how do you think this situation can be sort of pushed along, if you like, because there are disagreements, obviously, between Turkey and the European Union over things like refugees, over an approach to terrorism. And there are also disagreements between your own government and some of the other governments in the European Union as well. So what are the conditions that there needs to be? How can you sort of push this situation along? Look, I don't think we should consider it as something surprising or something extraordinary that we have debates among ourselves. I mean, we are all sovereign countries. We have different history, different location, different understanding of the world, different roots, different religion, different culture. So, so why should we agree on everything? That would be a uh, not uh, realistic expectation, let's put it this way. So we don't have to uh, investigate on what we do not disagree because this is I mean, kind of obvious, but we, we have to concentrate on areas where we can work together. And migration is definitely an area where EU uh, should work together with Turkey in a proper manner. You know, uh, migration was uh, one of the uh, most significant challenges European Union had uh, ever had to face. Back in 2015, um, illegal migration constituted a uh, very significant uh, um, security and cultural uh, risk to the uh, continent. Now migration constitutes uh, economic risk and healthcare risk uh, as well. So we have to make sure that uh, Turkey will keep uh, its borders uh, strong for which I think uh, we have to um, close open pass all open uh, uh, issues regarding the EU-Turkey deal on migration. Because if Turkey does not uh, strong its borders strong, uh, we can get in trouble very easily. And the migratory wave, which we have experienced in 2015, will be nothing compared to what we might foresee. Uh, in this regard. So I think that the EU-Turkey deal should be, uh, uh, should be uh, respected by both sides. And when I say both sides, I mean European Union as well. Uh, we have promised 6 billion euros to be, um, uh, to be paid to Turkey. Now European Commission speaks about 4.7 billion euros of being allocated. Turkey says it's less, but it doesn't matter whether it's less or more because it's not 6 billion. 
So, uh, so I think in order to be to have the leverage, in order to uh, be able to argue in favor of this agreement to be respected on both sides, European Union should deliver as well. Now, relations between uh, Turkey and Hungary seem to be very good in recent years. What are these the what is the basis of these good relations, would you say? Look, first of all, mutual respect. You know, this is the uh, guiding principle of our foreign policy. We give the respect to, um, uh, to our counterparts, but we expect the respect as well. In the international relations, we are fed up with all those um, attempts to lecture the others. We simply don't like when others try to teach us Hungarians how we should live our own lives. And we have never uh, experienced any kind, of, um, any kind of attempt to interfere into our domestic issues on behalf of Turkey, as we have never tried anything like this. Uh, uh, either it's well above our payroll to give advices to other countries how they should accommodate their uh, own lives. So mutual respect is there, and I think it's, it's extremely uh, important. On the, on the other hand, we have a very, uh, um, let's say, um, effective cooperation in the field of economy. And what is really new is the energy cooperation given the fact that Hungary will buy gas uh, uh, from Gazprom through the Turkish stream pipeline in the future as well. Uh, so from October 2021, we will have a um, gas delivery route, uh, um, you know, leading through uh, Turkey, Bulgaria, Serbia, Hungary and then Slovakia, on which uh, on the first stage uh, 6 billion cubic meters annually and on the second stage 8.5 billion cubic meters annually can be delivered uh, to Hungary. So all this will come through Turkey. That's why the role of Turkey uh, will increase when it comes to the energy supply of the country. Now, I, I suppose there are uh, cynics out there who look at the Turkey-Hungary relationship, maybe people who are critical of the Hungarian government or critical of the Turkish government, and they say, oh, I know why they get on, because they have certain behaviour in common. They are uh, Sometimes uh, they do this sort of authoritarian behaviour. Uh, they have either a harsh response or they uh, ignore opposition groups, this kind of thing. What would you say to those people who are sort of putting forward these kinds of arguments? Maybe they are frustrated because they are not successful. They are not as successful as we are and they try to attack us uh, always. You know, we have been in office for 10 years now continuously. We have won uh, the last three consecutive national elections by a two-third majority, by a big, big margin. And I understand that for international liberal mainstream, be it media or politics, it is very, very complicated to digest that there are governments uh, which are going against the liberal mainstream, which are performing um, patriotic policies, which consider national interest as number one, which consider um, uh, Christian um, uh, values uh, important, which respect history, which respect culture, which uh, consider national identity as important, and still they are successful. So, so this, uh, kind of, um, um, this kind of, or these issues, or these phenomena, are not uh, digestible by, by international liberal mainstream, especially in Europe. That's why we are under attack from 2010. Regardless what we have done, it was attacked. If any other uh, EU member state made the same, there was no attack, except for Poland, of course, or other Central uh, uh, Europeans. And, and, you know, it is not fair. Um, we can say we are fed up uh, with that. But, but the thing is that we don't really care about these uh, criticisms because uh, what we have to care about is the will of the Hungarian people. They have elected us, um, they took part on the elections, they are the ones whom we have to satisfy. You know, um, when you say authoritarian, um, which, which is the word many times used on us by Western European friends uh, of ours, uh, think tankers, politicians, uh, journalists, you know what I would like to draw their attention to is that it's a very anti-democratic approach and very illiberal, if I might say. Why? Because uh, uh, we have not won um, the possibility to govern the country on lottery. We have won an election. Now, what election means? People go to the balloting boxes and vote. Meaning that whoever considers us as an authoritarian regime challenges the decision of the Hungarian people. Because it is based on the Hungarian people that we have a two-third majority. You know, uh, we did not uh, steal it from somewhere, we got it from the people. I just want to return back to the issue of refugees because the, the problem is still there for Europe. We've still got a war going on in Syria. We've also got a war going on in Libya. And Libya is on a refugee route from Africa to Europe. So, in your view, how can Europe deal with this problem? Well, we have a guiding principle here as well. This guiding principle says that we have to bring help where it is needed and should not bring problems where there are no problems. 
meaning that we have to get rid of all those migratory policies in Brussels, which can be easily translated uh, as an invitation uh, to those people who want to come to Europe. International law speaks very clearly. If one is uh, forced to leave uh, his or her home because of some reasons, then uh, he or she is allowed to stay temporarily on the territory of the first safe uh, country. And this must be uh, respected. Um, we do believe that uh, we have to protect our external borders. It must be us to decide with whom we would like to live together. Like Hungary, we never give up its own right to make a decision on our own whom we would like to enter uh, the territory of Hungary, whom we would not like to do so. We have the only ones to make our own decision with whom we would like to live in our own country in the future and with whom not. And this decision should not be taken away by anybody. We have to protect the external uh, borders. We have to make sure that we protect um, uh, Europe. And uh, we, have to, um, we have to make sure that we help those communities who are in need, but not with bringing their people here, but tackling the root causes <coughs> why they are faced with challenges. On the other hand, I have to tell you that it's very complicated to consider anybody as a refugee who, um, who comes across um, a series of uh, safe countries. Because why should we consider anybody being a refugee uh, who would want to violate the border between Serbia and Hungary or Croatia and Hungary? I mean, is there a war in Serbia? No, definitely not. Is there a life of these people in danger in Serbia? No, it's not. And the same in, in Croatia. But if I go more south, Macedonia situation is the same. Turkey situation is the same. So, so here, these are safe countries. So why, why should people um, you know, cross these countries? Because they want to go to Germany, they want to go to Austria, they want to go to Sweden. But uh, such kind of human right doesn't exist. Earlier this year, there were tens of thousands of refugees at the Greek border because Turkey basically said, we've got 3.6 million refugees already. We can't really look after many more. There are possibly several hundreds of thousands of them coming from Syria now because of renewed fighting there. Uh, but Greece wouldn't let the refugees in. Now, if you were in the position of the Greek government, what would you have done? Well, the same as we have been doing for the last five years. We uh, made it very clear that crossing the border of Hungary is only possible legally. Meaning that if you have a passport, if you, uh, if you comply with all the regulations, uh, this is the only way and we, and we let you in. But uh, no any other way. I mean, uh, uh, I think uh, Greece did well. Uh, you know, I have to tell you that uh, we had a debate in February in the Foreign Affairs Council, right in the midst of these events on the border between Turkey and Greece. And, uh, you know, we made a statement, I mean, Foreign Affairs Ministers of European Union, that we encourage Greece, you know, to, uh, to protect its border, to keep the border strong, uh, to make it sure that everybody um, only legally can, uh, can enter the territory of Europe and so on and so forth. We have been saying the same for the last five years. And if you recall what kind of criticism we received during the last five years, you know, it's crazy. I mean, we were compared to the worst dictatorships of the 20th century by some political leaders. Uh, the expressions were used on us uh, were much more than simple insults. And we, were under, we have been under continuous attack. And now we said the same to Greece to do what we have been doing, but for what we were criticized. So these double standards are there. I remember I was there five years ago, only, uh, only four current foreign ministers, uh, foreign minister of Luxembourg, Lithuania, Latvia and myself. We were there at the debates in 2015 and we very well remember. Uh, we might remember differently, but we very, very well remember the same. Uh, what happened at that time and what happened now? You know, I have to tell you that uh, if you are a member of the Schengen area, you have an obligation. You have to protect your external border. That's what we have been doing. Had we not protected our external Schengen border, criticism would be fair enough on us why you have not done so. So, I mean, being member of the club, being member of Schengen area, being located at the external border brings you um, obligations. And one obligation is that you have to make sure that you protect your border. And that's what Greece uh, has been doing and uh, they have to continue to do so. So do you have any sympathy with Turkey's position though? What can be done about Turkey and it having to look after all of these refugees, but it says it's not getting enough help from Europe? Look, um, well, I have to agree with them because, I mean, we promised 6 billion euros to them. Twice 3 billion euros. And uh, the Turkish say that they got 3.4 billion. European Union says they have allocated 4.7, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not 6. We have to pay 6 billion euros to the Turkish, what we, what we uh, promised. And on the other hand, I would be more careful on behalf of some European leaders by criticizing uh, Turkey bashing their president because it's a proud nation, we have to understand. 
And uh, if uh, criticism and uh, bashing goes beyond the border or beyond the line, mm, then that might change the behavior of Turkey. And this is something that we definitely should avoid. So we, we can't make two things in, in the meantime, you know, bashing Turkey and uh, putting the security or laying the security of the continent in the hands of the Turkish president, because that's what we have been doing. Look, since 2015, European Union have not utilized the time to build the necessary infrastructure to protect the borders. I mean, uh, I understand, of course, my, my, my Greek friends, my, my Italian friends, the Spanish, they always say, oh, yeah, we have a different issue because we, are, we have to protect the land border and they have to protect the maritime border, which, which must be more complicated, I admit that, but more complicated doesn't mean impossible to my understanding. Look at Australia. They had hundreds or even thousands of boats on an annual basis arriving to them with full of uh, illegal migrants. Now zero. They made it and they have a little bit longer maritime border than, than the entire European Union. So, so there must be a solution. We had five years for that, five years uh, in order to, to overcome, to build infrastructure, to build capacity, to put their ships, whatever. And for some reason, European Union failed to do so. And now, now we are again in a situation when Libya um, um, you know, serves as a green corridor. Uh, for migration, when boats are, uh, are delivering illegal migrants to Malta, to Italy, when NGOs uh, help them, so-called NGOs, uh, NGOs cooperating with smugglers and traffickers, they, they bring people to European Union. We are, you know, defenseless, basically. And this is bad. This is bad. I wanted to ask you about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic now. There's a lot of talk that when this is all over, this will bring about new opportunities, a new world order, a new way of countries doing business with each other, uh, new ways of communication. Do you subscribe to all of this? Do you think things are going to change? Yeah, absolutely, I do. I really do think that everything is going to be changed. Uh, you know, there's a saying is nothing sure, only the change. And... Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that nothing is going to be the similar, neither in, world, in global politics nor in, in world economy, uh, as it used to be uh, before. It's, it's obviously to see that there are uh, countries emerging, countries falling back, uh, new alliances being created, former alliances um, break up. Um, so now I think it's very important to make all necessary preparations in order to be strong in this post-COVID uh, uh, period of time. That's why, for example, we have put together a very robust economic development plan in the framework of which we help our companies uh, to be able to make necessary investments, developments, modernization, uh, which, uh, which can end up in a better position at the start line when it comes to this new competition. So we don't give out money on, um, for, uh, for, to finance unemployment. What we do is that we finance companies who invest in order to A, keep the, um, uh, keep the headcount, B, to be uh, more competitive after, after the crisis than they were before. Back in 2010, when we came into office during the, um, uh, during the economic crisis, then we have set an ambitious goal uh, in front of ourselves as well, which was not only to survive the crisis, because it's not very ambitious, or uh, well, they can be more ambitious than that. Our goal was to be stronger in the post-crisis period than before, and we succeeded. During the last 10 years, we made a lot of efforts with which we reached in a position that we broke our investment record year by year. We broke export record year by year. There's an 85% export over GDP ratio. Although we are number 92 globally when it comes to population, we are number 34 when it comes to export uh, performance. And uh, last year, we had the highest growth rate of the European Union. What do you make of the European Union's response to the COVID-19 pandemic? Because in the early stages, it seemed a bit like it was every country for itself, there were internal borders being closed down, and countries like Italy and Spain, which have been quite badly hit by the coronavirus, they seem to feel that they weren't getting the help from other member states as well. What do you make of what has been going on? Look, I mean, European Union uh, was definitely unprepared for such a crisis, which is not a judgment, it is a description. Uh, all those answers or responses which um, have been worked out, were worked out on a national basis. So if you look at all the responses, they were national responses made by the member states. And the significance of coordination from Brussels was diminished pretty much. Uh, just to give you an idea, we made repatriations for whole March and then we got a letter from the European Commission that they would pay for repatriation on the 31st of March. You know? So I mean, things went much slower uh, than they should have. Um, and then I understand um, the institutions in Brussels understood that they have to make something in order to show that they are there still. 
and uh, this recovery fund, which is now uh, being put forward, is an attempt for that. You know, we Hungarians have a um, clear approach, saying that first money must be earned, then spent. Now this recovery fund is a little bit the other way around, but uh, we understand it's important for other member states, so we, we're not going to block it. But we demand uh, the, um, the division of money, the methodology of division of the money to be fair. And we cannot accept a situation uh, when poor countries get less money than the rich countries. I mean, how you sell that? What's the rationale behind? Give you one idea. Uh, we are uh, Portugal and Hungary under safe size when it comes to population, when it comes to territory as well. And Portugal gets much more money from, than from Hungary according to the proposal. Our question is, why is that so? Why is that so? I mean, we were not hit by the crisis. Yes, we were, like they were. And we have the similar size. So what's the reason for that? Uh, not getting the similar amount of money. So, um, so rich countries getting more money from after a methodology than poor ones I, or poorer ones. It's very complicated to, to explain, to sell and to understand in the meantime and to respect. In your own country, there was a, a state of emergency in this, uh, and a, a rule by decree for a few weeks, which I understand have now been uh, removed. But again, there was criticism about this move from uh, critics of the, the Hungarian government. Why did you feel the need to introduce this? And do you feel vindicated now that you introduced it? Look, uh, was there any EU member states which, which did not introduce such a state of emergency? I don't believe so every member states of the European Union introduced state of emergency. And you see, this is very unfair and very uh, uh, strange. And uh, this is pretty much double standards that uh, this question can be raised. Why Hungary introduced a state of emergency? Why uh, don't, didn't we recognize that there was a COVID <laughs> situation? So, I mean, sorry to laugh at it, but it's being tragic in the meantime to pose uh, such a question, not you personally, but because it's not you. But, you know, generally there was huge attack on Hungary. Uh, and, you know, uh, the, the reason for the attack, reason be between quotation marks, was that we have not put a concrete deadline uh, in the law when the state of emergency should uh, cease. But our question was, who knows when, <laughs> when COVID would, 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 would uh, go away in a, in, in a, uh, to a certain extent that we can cease or we can conclude uh, the state of uh, emergency. And we were... You know, we were accused by building a dictatorship forever, by maintaining this whole situation when we are allowed to govern through decrees for the eternity. And then we seize this situation within 90 days. No one apologized. I mean, it would have been fair to say uh, on behalf of European liberal mainstream political and, and media to say, OK, we put these accusations in Hungary, but sorry, we were uh, wrong because they ended up in less than 90 days. I remember the debate when we passed this law, opposition demanded 120 days, you know, and we seized in less than 90. And the other thing is, you know what, I, it's very complicated for me to understand. Maybe I'm not smart enough to do so. But you know, we got a lot of criticism from Dutch, Finnish, Norwegian, um, uh, Danish, whatever, foreign ministers and prime ministers and political leaders on why Hungarian regulation of state of emergency say this or that and that? I wonder how these people have time for that. I mean, you know, we were under a, um, under a crisis. Uh, thousands of people died on a daily basis in Europe. Uh, tens of thousands got infected on a daily basis. Thousands lost their jobs on a daily basis. And these foreign ministers and these prime ministers, these political leaders had time to deal with the Hungarian regulation on the corona law. So, I mean, to be honest, it's unbelievable. A few years ago, the Hungarian government announced this uh, uh, program of sort of Eastern opening to uh, reach out to countries like Russia, Asia, China to increase relations, look for economic opportunities there. How is that progressing at the moment and where does Hungary see itself? Does it see itself firmly inside Europe or looking elsewhere? Look, uh, everybody measures that in the European Union, but we are honest on that and the others are hypocritical. You know, when we are bashed for... Um, making too much business with China. Uh, do you know uh, how many percentage of EU-China trade is represented by the 11 Central European member states? 9.9. .9. Which means that 90.1% of EU-China trade is being managed uh, by the Western Europeans. When it comes to Russia, I mean, those who bash Russia the loudest way, they make the biggest businesses with the Russians. They make the biggest businesses with the Russians. When it comes about Huawei, you know, 
I mean, everybody criticizes in, in Western Europe, Huawei and the Hungarian government, why we don't, uh, you know, send them out or why we don't restrict them. You know, you have a uh, 5G service in downtown Budapest now, operated by Vodafone, and Vodafone constructed Huawei to build the infrastructure for them. So I, I asked my Western European colleagues, so why you don't go to London? Why you don't ask the British colleagues of ours? Why they work together with Huawei? By the way, we don't have anything, anything um, you know, uh, uh, any criticism on, on Vodafone making that because that must be their interest. And I'm pretty sure that they would not act against their own interest. They would not act against the British national security interest. Just, just you know, to be fair. I mean, Western European countries, Western European companies, American companies work together with the Chinese. 